So let's hear it for Lauren. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> How was lunch, you guys? Lunch was good. I had one of those Japanese burrito things. It was tasty. Um, so today our workshop is going to be very interactive. We have Christian in the house who's going to pass out paper and pen to you guys. You might want to take two. And the goal for today is that you guys come away with an understanding, a working knowledge of a framework that you can apply to onboarding, to front-end conversion, to content marketing. And it's what I call customer experience, CX for short. So I'm going to be using that abbreviation quite frequently. In the spirit of being interactive, I also want to know a little bit about you guys. So there are some lights that are pretty bright, but I want to know what kinds of businesses you have. So before we get started, um, let's just shout out like what kind of businesses you have. How many of you guys are tech? Raise your hand. OK, cool. Um, B2B tech? Not that many, OK. B2C tech? Cool. Uh, who's from the East Coast? Who's from the West Coast? Who's international? Holler. Um, all right, so before we get started, too, I do want to see what some of your specific businesses are. This is a really small, intimate space. We can dive deep. You can ask questions. And hopefully, we can give you uh, responses in real time. So uh, let's start over here. Business. Um, leadership training. Great. Uh, gifting. Gifting. These guys, Java Zen. Nutraceuticals, right? Yeah. yeah. Right here, polka dots. Well, we're from, uh, the Rebel Venture Fund. Rebel Venture Fund. Po you too? Polka dots? All right. <laughs> Entertainment. Great. Uh, consumer products Great. This is good. You guys can hear them, right? Yeah, yeah. productivity tools. Great. Tech, you want to be a little more specific? <laughs> awesome. Great. Back row. You guys are tech.co. Woof, right there. Dog collars with GPS. Next. Medical devices. Awesome. Okay. Great. Internet marketing. All right, welcome. <laughs> what business are you in? Uh, events. events. Okay. So we've got quite a nice variety here, actually, which is really exciting. And uh, we're just going to kick it off. Um, all right, customer experience. I'm going to go really fast, you guys, so we can get to the part that's about you, all right? So if you have any questions, hold them until the end of my like lightning round, and then we can go. Fair? Let's do it. Uh, if you want to hashtag anything, celebrate CX. All right, we're going to skip that. Brand's purpose. Do you know what you're doing? Someone tell me what your brand's purpose is. Shout it out. Help people improve. Help people improve. Anybody else? Healthiest coffee, great, that's a great purpose. All right, the, the brand purpose is the difference you're making in the world. Why is this important? Because we have to be able to know what transformation we're providing to our customer, all right? So here are some examples of, and obviously delivering happiness is different now, um, but these are brand purposes. And when we're talking about CX, the transformation is super important because that's the reason that the customer is actually buying what you are selling because they want to experience your transformation personally. All right, what is CX? I use a definition of CX that encompasses all touch points across that user journey. That means before they've become customers and after they've already used your product and it's gone, okay? All of those touch points for me encompass CX. That means before someone has paid you money, they're still a customer because they're a customer who just hasn't paid you yet, all right? So CX is all the touch points. Um, brand experience, that's something that, that people like to say a lot. Um, I think customer experience is a little bit different, but there are all kinds of ways that people can interact with your brand. 
These are some different ways. Advocacy, someone else is telling them about it, actually using it, purchasing it, saying, oh, I think that's really interesting. Uh, just being aware of the brand in general. Now, let's talk about transformations. Here we've got two transformations. Internal transformation, external transformation. Internal, obviously, is much less visible. But it's often the most important one that you must understand in order to have a quality customer experience that converts. So, what's the, person, or what's the internal transformation? Could be mindset, could be capacity, could be emotions, could be perspective. Who wants to share with me what your internal transformation is? Say that again? Peace of mind. Peace of mind. That's a brilliant internal transformation. You remind me again what your document digitization. Document digi digitization. Yeah. So you want to digitize your documents. You want to have peace of mind that they're not going to burn up. So you've got some redundancy built in. Yes. Who else has a handle, firm handle on your internal transformation, what you offer? No? Perspective. Perspective. Okay, cool. What does that mean? Yeah, you're giving them knowledge, too. Your readers are giving, getting knowledge. Um, I'll give you an example. When, when I go in and consult, let's say, with a CEO, and that person is, is feeling like, eh, I'm not sure about, uh, that I've got the right team in place, for example. Um, the internal transformation that I'm selling is, um, peace of mind is actually a, a really good one, but it's basically reinforcing what that CEO already thought or saying, ah, no, you're wrong. So the transformation that, that he or she gets is all around, oh, security that my decision or my thought process was, was right, validation, or, oh, actually, no, I've got a, a different, a contrarian perspective. Someone's got something else that, that I need to think about. So a lot of it is about validation for me. So I'm selling validation. You must understand these things. You've got to understand the emotion to get to customer experience. External, that's the easy part. What are you guys selling? What can they touch and feel? Coffee. It's like in a bag, right? Home experience. All right, cool. Yeah, you're selling the coffee. But what's your internal change? Energy. Mindset. Mindset. That I'm doing the best thing possible for my body, right? Yeah, we have to know those things. Brand touch points. If you've thought of some of these, great. If you've got to got a chance to look at some of these and say, oh, you know, we don't, we don't really think about that, that touch point in our uh, user journey. Just take a gander. This slide deck will be up on SlideShare so you can always come back to it. Again, I'm gonna go really fast through the, the intro part so that we can get to the fun part, roll up our sleeves. All right, this whole system that I've used, which by the way, uh, recently a, a New York City-based real estate firm applied my CX principles they used it on their front-end website, and then they used it for their phone salespeople who are on the phone and emailing hot leads. They saw a 2x bump in conversion. That means that the people who came in through their pathways times two started going out with real estate brokers. We know the numbers on that. That means that they're starting to make two times as much money on commissions because after they've gone through their funnel, this particular real estate company, they have an 83% retention rate from, oh, I'm going out to see something to, oh, I'm actually purchasing. And that time period can be like very short, but it can also be 18 months. Sometimes all that real estate stuff takes time. But in New York where the property values are really high, that translated to some very, very concrete numbers just from saying, oh, how's our person feeling? What's our customer afraid of? How can we address that over their arc? Um, a software company, 5X conversion, paid. 100 bucks a month, very little bounce, or very little churn, rather. And they went from $250,000 in revenue to $650,000 in revenue annually um, over the course of nine months, which was pretty cool. We like to see that. Why? Look, this is art, you guys. 
There are a lot of people out there who understand inter internet marketing and t look at it from a scientific perspective, very technical. That's not that, that's not this. This is art, so we're gonna talk about the art of it. And to go to the foundation of it is Freytag's Pyramid. How many of you know what the hell that is? Good. Um, where'd you learn that? Were you an English major? Yep. All right. So how many of you watch movies? Or uh, Netflix or Amazon TV series? All right. So all of those TV writers who hook you in for those series use this. Freytag's Pyramid. Because this is the foundation of an emotional connection with characters, a brand or product. This is the foundation of fans, fanaticism. This is the foundation of an emotional customer experience. So, screenwriters, TV writers, novelists, what other narrative folks am I not including? Even poets, to some extent, can use this. Um, this is all about creating drama. We start with the exposition. That's where we get to know you. You tell us about the major players. You're just setting the stage. You've got the rising action. That's where stuff starts to happen. That's where we say, oh, I'm into this show. You've got the climax, which for a lot of you, you're going to be surprised that it's in the middle. We'll talk about why that is. You've got the climax where the big bang happens. Something is totally crazy, and the, the protagonist has got to figure it out. You've got falling action where things are starting to look like they're going to sort themselves out. And then you've got the, oh shit, the reversal. Like, I don't know if they're actually going to get together. Are they right for one another? I'm not sure. Is Walt going to come back? Um, and then you've got the denouement, which is a France, fancy French word. It means the untying of the knot. That is where all the pieces get put back in their place. And then you've just had the ride of your life. You want to go back to the beginning and tell your BFF about this story. And then your BFF goes through the whole arc and then does the same thing again. How many of us want that for our brands? I do, for sure. So that's Freytag's Pyramid. Um, I started applying this to the concepts of business a couple years ago, and, um, well, I mean, I thought it was pretty genius. Apparently other people are doing it too, so it's cool. Um, but what is really important is how we then create that framework for, like I said, your content strategy how we create that framework for your onboarding, or how we do it for your front-end user acquisition. So we're gonna talk about that a little more in depth. Um, if you do not have a piece of paper, well, Christian, will you make sure that they have paper? You're out? Um, I think there's more paper out in the front, actually, the girls at the front desk. Um, you will want a piece of paper, okay? Because if you want to go ahead and start working through your narrative arc, then you'll wanna, you know, draw a little arc, and then we'll talk through it. So, and I would love to have you guys let me know what you're working through. So as we go through it, we're gonna start again. Um, here, exposition. Again, that's the meet and greet. You've got rising action, getting to know you, making the commitment. This is where they commit to your brand. They're either giving you an email address or they're giving you their credit card. Putting it into practice, that's where they start to actually use it in their lives. The minor turnaround before the eventual resolution, the reversal, that's when resistance comes up. So let's say they're using Java Zen, and they're like, yeah, I'm feeling really good, but then I get kind of lazy, and I like don't mix it up into my drink in the morning, or I'm not putting it in my smoothies. That's the minor turnaround where they're having resistance. They're like, I don't know, it's like 40 bucks a bag. You have to anticipate that so you can get them through that hump to get to the denouement of satisfaction where they're like, oh my gosh, it's Java Zen, I'm Instagramming it all the time, it's the greatest, right? And they become the hero of that story. They become your Walt, all right? So that's the overview of this. I think, um, any questions about that concept before we move on? Cool, I'm gonna grab some water. Uh, so what we're gonna do is take out your piece of paper or your favorite digital device, draw your arc. It's cuter, I think, when it's an arc instead of bullet points. And we're gonna start with really diving into the specifics. So, at the meet and greet. 
This is where the audience is just starting to learn the facts of your brand. This is what we learned in elementary school, really, the who, what, where, when, why stuff, the W questions. That's where we do this. Here is where you want to make sure that it is crystal clear what your desired next step is. And that's where a lot of brands fall down on the job. So here, you've got to give them an invitation. It's got to feel like an invitation. So that's what you want to think about here in the meet and greet spot. Getting to know one another. This is where they can kind of remember that transformation. This is where they can sample, taste a little bit of that transformation for themselves. I don't know, okay, we're going to go with this nutraceutical um, market. There's a brand called Aloha. They're individually packaged green powder. I have not tasted them, incidentally. Um, even though I'm their target market, but they are spending like crazy ad dollars all over the internet to give you some sample packs. I believe you have to pay shipping. They're inviting you to get to know them. They're doing it actually fairly well. I'm not quite sure why I haven't clicked. Um, but they want you to feel the transformation of Aloha green drinks for, you know, a loss leader, essentially. It probably doesn't cost them much. Um, and then they want to give you a desired next step. I would put money that they have an invitation to get Aloha on a subscription basis at a discount in that trial sample pack, all right? Making a commitment. This is where, you know, again, this is the climax of the narrative. This is where we're going, are they gonna or are they not? And at this point, they're experiencing your change. The second they hit buy or the second they start to input that credit card information, they're already experiencing your transformation because they're thinking about the peace of mind that they're going to get. They're thinking about the energy that they might glean. They're going, oh, yeah, if they, let's say it's a, I don't know, a, a weight loss system. If they're going to buy, how many of you have bought like a P90X or Beachbody's brand? Anyone? Anyone? Yes. Um, when the, isn't it true, the second you decide to buy P90X or, or, you know, whatever from Tony Horton, don't you already feel healthier? Yeah. You guys, the transformation starts at the climax. It has to. And if we don't know what our transformation is, then we can't deliver that to them on an emotional level. Okay, the desired next step, and this is really important if you want repeat customers, the adoption of the solution and engagement with the product or service. So this is where they're starting to use it. This is integration time. This is where it is so crucial that you support them through integration. For those of you who do offer, let's say, software service or something online, um, like you know, online education, training, you want them to use it. There are tons of businesses out there that rely on people who don't use stuff, right? Those are crappy business models. <laughs> like. Screw them. We want our users to continue to use what we're selling because we want them to continue to experience that transformation. So we've got to have a really solid approach to how they put it into practice. All right. Again, the minor turnaround. This happens across the board. It happens in big corporate, corporate when you're trying to institute Slack, I don't know, at Deloitte, like they're trying to do. Ha, huh, have you tried that? Slack is having a really hard time, by the way, um, even though they've got the top, top brass in on it. You've got to anticipate that you're going to have resistance. You have got to beat them to the resistance and offer them solutions. You want them to persevere so that they get to satisfaction so that they become your success, success story, so that Harvard Business Review can publish the case study of how Deloitte implemented Slack in a 60,000 person company, and this is how it went and it was glorious. Ah. Okay, so we're gonna come at this from another angle. Um, and we're gonna start, I'll slow down a little bit so that you guys can start writing down how you would approach this. Um, Here's, I just use the same concept for content narration, but instead, I'm going to give you some ideas, some prompts, if you will, on how you can approach content with your CX. So when you're starting at the beginning, you can begin with the end in mind. One of the most important things, I think, is painting the picture of success. Don't we love before and after shots? Houses, bodies, homes organized. 
We freaking love that stuff. And if we can paint the picture of what it looks like to experience the transformation, then we can already emotionally engage our user. All right, here's what I'm going to teach you. Classic, here's what I'm gonna share with you today. Um, and then help them, this one is, is really crucial too, and I don't think enough companies spend time on this third, uh, fourth bullet point. Helping them self-identify so that the second they hit your site, they go, me please, I totally identify with everything that's on your page. I had a client who um, really wanted to put a picture of himself on his homepage, and I was like, dude, who's your customer again? And she's a, um, a, a solopreneur, <laughs> she, is a solopreneur who's like, you know, in her 30s. We did not put him on the homepage. We put a girl in her 30s having like a coffee with her laptop on the homepage. You need to make sure that your people know that they're your people. They might not have the, the concrete inkling that they are, so it's up to you to help them self-identify. It's up to you to help them put up their hands and go, you are talking to me. If you can start that here at the exposition, you're gonna be in really good shape. So this can also give you ideas for content marketing um, because there you go, you've got, you've got four different ways to slice and dice what that looks like, who they are. All right, next up, the rising action. This is a little bit, um, it, it can be a little bit more tactical for them. It's a little bit more about, hey, here's how you do this or here's how someone else did this and was successful. You can also be really clear and expand a bit on the challenge that they are facing and or that transformation. That's why you must always keep that transformation very, very clear in front of mind when you're talking about any kind of marketing or CX. You really want to get clear about the change that they're seeking. Experience, this is great. Stories and context, how I did it. And then tools, you want to help them taste what you're doing, sampling what you can offer, other resources for moral support, and you wanna make it simple, but not easy. What does that mean? You want it to be pretty simple for them to understand. Oh, I see the steps that I have to take. Is it easy to wake up and do uh, a Tony Horton workout every morning? If you commit to it, yeah, you know what you have to do. That's the simple part. The, the hard part, it's not easy, is actually doing it, right? So making it clear and simple, oh, you just toss this in your blender, you, you know, stir it around in your water, simple. Is it easy? Not necessarily. So keep it simple, always, even if it isn't necessarily easy. All right, the climax or turning point. I don't know where my notes are on that, but all right, we'll talk about it anyway. All right, at your climax or turning point, this is where it's vitally important that the transformation is there smack in their face. All right, so whatever that means for your conversion, whether it's giving over the email address, the all important email address, or actually, you know, paying, um, there was a, I don't know if they're in the room, there was a, a, a pair in my mentor session earlier today, and it was really interesting. They have a, a really unique concept. It's um, Priceline for material consumer goods. So I could go on and be like, I really want these Gucci sunglasses. I'm willing to pay $125, and they're either going to be able to do it or not, right? Cool, huh? And um, it was interesting. They had very, they had, oh, confirm my purchase, but you can't confirm the purchase if I don't know yet if I'm buying it. One tiny niggling piece of feedback was, hey, why not have, you know, something about, you know, confirm my bid or confirm my, my wish or whatever, because they use the word wish in other places, um, so that I'm reinforcing the idea that I am the agent of action there. I'm saying, I'm bidding on this. I'm not just buying it. I'm bidding it and I'm getting a deal and it feels really, really good. Because the transformation they're offering isn't that... I'm buying the Gucci sunglasses. The transformation they're offering internally is that I'm excited because I am convinced I'm getting a deal, so I feel, um, I feel good about myself. Um, and then externally, I'm like able to say, hey guys, I got a good deal. And, and then the Gucci sunglasses come to my, 
apartment and I get to wear them. Um, so again, it wasn't so much about confirming my purchase. That's really boring. The transformation is all about that I'm kind of, not haggling, but that I'm doing this, so I'm bidding on it. Obviously, they can't use the words that Priceline does because theirs are all trademarked. Um, so make sure in every touch point along your process of conversion and, and the purchase and the checkout, make sure that you're reinforcing the transformation that you offer. It's got to be top of mind. All right. Falling action. This is the integration piece. So you need to give them ways that they can easily integrate this into their lives. You need to set up your email autoresponders or whatever touch points you have afterwards to let them integrate this into their lives that much more easily. Um, I have a client that, uh, so an email, like an email service provider, and one of their big hurdles of conversion, after even somebody has, has paid, is they never upload their email list. Guess what they do here? Part of their workflow is they get a call from a customer service representative who says, hey, can I help you upload your email list for you? Do you think those people stay customers? Hell yeah, they stay customers. Next, the reversal. Okay, when they're going to quit, when they're going to poop out, when they're going to say it's too expensive, when they're going to say, I don't need this anymore. You need to know upfront when that happens. If you're doing your homework, you've got your data, you know when that happens. You can quantify it, anticipate it, and offer them the experience, the tools, and the resources that they will need in order to get over that hump of resistance. Remember that you must keep the end result in mind. Transformation. And then the denouement. Okay. They've achieved the desired outcome. Now, what are you giving them? What's the platform that you give them so that they can paint their picture of success for everyone else to see? Uh, who does this really well? There, uh, there's a brand called Skinny Bunny Tea. Skinny Bunny Tea has an Instagram feed. People tag themselves all the time. Skinny Bunny Tea people show how much weight they've lost with Skinny Bunny Tea. Whether or not it's a placebo effect, we're not going to debate that. Um, people want to show that they have experienced this transformation. So give them the opportunity. Make it painfully simple for them to do it. And again, that's going to bring more people into your pipeline, which is exciting and what we all want. So um, here, we can, simple questions that you guys can answer with your teams that are going to give you an idea of, okay, we can apply this to our content. Oh, we can apply this to, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody is retail, but like you can apply this to a retail space. You can apply it with online and offline touch points. That company that I was saying, the email marketing, how many email marketing companies call customers? Not that many, although I do get calls from eye contact all the freaking time. Don't like that, but they're selling me something. It's not helpful. So you can use this for online and on offline touch points to make yourself stand out. You can use, uh, I've seen clients work this into a direct mail flow so that um, they actually have touch points that, that click over to direct mail. So you know, once they've signed up and then they've done this and then they've done that, then they get a direct mail piece that's reinforcing again the transformation. Um, and the exposition spot, who are you? What's the solution or change that you provide? Vision, and then what's the way of success? What's that path of success look like? The rising action, again, this is where they self-identify the tools that are most powerful early on. What's the number one tool? A lot of people think that it would be really strange to give this away in rising action, the number one tool that helps them. Um, in fact, it can help conversion and make that person a customer for life. So if it, even if that seems counterintuitive to give away the farm or the, the milk, rather, no, the cow, the cow, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Um, if you're giving away your cow, uh, people think, oh, they're not going to come back for milk. But um, actually, it's my, um, my assertion that, that they will. You give them the number one tool that helps them be successful, and they will come back. Um, and in fact, the Tony Horton workouts are a great example of that. A lot of them you can find online, but don't we all end up buying the DVDs anyway? Yes, we do. <laughs> um, okay, what helps them make a decision? What information do they still need? What are their objections and fears? What's the social proof? This can also be a tipping point at that climax. What flipped the switch for you? What will flip the switch for others? 
what's helpful to make lasting change. Okay, falling action. Again, this is about integration. So what are the helpful things that they need? What details should you be paying attention to now that the big stuff, that number one change is out of the way? Now what? Now what are they thinking about? The reversal, we've talked about this. One of the key pieces of the reversal and addressing it is inspiration. Again, I think that that gets um, left out. Uh, so if you were to work, look at, for example, Squarespace, um, what are they doing? Uh, they're inspiring people. That's what they care about. They're inspiring people to create Squarespace websites because they can do this thing that other people are doing, which is start a business and create a website for it. And Squarespace advertising is all about the inspiration piece. So when people get frustrated, when the going gets tough, stick to inspiration. That has been proven to work. Support and compassion, feeling their pain, making sure they know that you feel them. And then finally, this is the fun bit, celebration, painting the picture of the success story, inviting, sharing, and uh, giving them that platform as users. So, we're good for time. We have plenty of time. Um, no, 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 no. I'm going to skip that slide so we can move on. Oh, there's no more. All right, that's strange. Um, so what I would like to do now, can I sit down, you guys? Is that okay? Okay, cool. Um, what I'd like to do now is I would like to actually go through some content narr narrative arcs with you guys. And um, again, I want you to actually get something down on paper um, while you're here today that you can work with. So does that sound good? You guys want to do that? You up for it? We have roughly 20 minutes, so um, that's really good. Um, any questions before we start that? Anybody saying, I'm kind of, you know, not seeing this bit? No? Are you guys in food comas? <laughs> no. no. All right, just a little, just a little food coma, yeah. Very good. All right, so, yeah, the Japanese burritos, again, they were, they were tasty. So um, what I'm going to ask next is, where do you want to apply your, your CX arc? Do you want to do, and you guys, I want to hear what you guys are doing. So shout out. If you're going to do um, a content strategy, for, just in general, I usually do content strategies uh, cyclical. So I'll do a content strategy over a year, or I'll break it down into a quarter, or I'll break it down into a month. It really depends on your business, depend on, depends on where your business is in its life cycle, like if you're a going concern versus a startup, that kind of thing. So how many of you are gonna apply it to a content strategy? Okay, one, two, all right. How, okay, how many of you wanna apply it to um, like front-end conversion? One, two, three, yeah. Okay, good. Um, and then how many of you want to apply it to onboarding? Yeah? Okay. Cool. All right. So we've got quite, quite a range. That's fine. Um, so the, the first thing that I want you guys to do is I want you to identify your transformation and tell it to the person next to you. Go. You don't have to whisper. Lauren. Oh, okay. Real quick, transformation is a transformation you provide your customer. It's both internal and external. Internal transformations are like touchy-feely things. External tra transformations are things you can touch and feel outside of yourself. Cool? You have 30 seconds. Time. All right. Um, put up your hand if you want to tell me about your neighbor's transformation because it was really freaking cool. Yes.
Fantastic. Other transformations that are really cool. Oh, come on. Is everybody's business lame? <laughs> Who's got a cool transformation they want to share? So you can share your own or your neighbor's. Yes. Don't forget your girlfriend's birthday. Okay, so don't forget your girlfriend's birthday is the external transformation. What's the internal transformation? Preparation. Preparation. Give me more. Guys, don't give a shit about preparation. You're not selling preparation. What are you selling? You are selling sex. <laughs> you are selling sex. You're selling a better relationship. You're, you're selling love internally, and you're selling getting laid externally. You need to be very clear about that. Okay, anybody else confused about their transformation? Because we cannot go, if you've got the wrong premise, then don't do this, right? <laughs> no, he's selling, okay, he's selling what, an app that, that remembers your girlfriend's birthday and then... It lets you schedule all your gifts in advance. Okay, there you go. So, there you go. Yeah, he's selling love sex. And, and sex. Yeah, all right. Anybody else want to check their transformation with me? Yes. Yeah, okay, so tell me, tell us your business. Okay. To who? Uh, to um, Okay. That's great. Oh. Okay, so you've got you've got like a double business model. Yeah. Okay, let's let's talk about the electric vehicles. So, electric vehicles for um, fairly immobilized people from age 40 to 70. What's your external transformation? That's very simple. Mobility, right. right? Okay, what's the internal transformation? This is very important for you. I know. That's why I'm such a hard All right, you need to talk to your customers. If you guys are unclear about your internal transformation, you must go talk to customers. Your customers are feeling freedom. I, that's what I was, that was the word. Yeah. But I wasn't sure if that was yeah, your customers are seeking freedom. They're seeking independence. Yeah. yeah. Okay, who else is confused about transformation? Right here. Uh, so we're an app, download the app, videos your golf swing, it'll give you instructions so you can improve your golf swing. Okay, cool. Okay? So I would assume from an internal perspective is that self-respect and kind of that uh, self-esteem. Okay. Is my guess. Yeah, yeah, that works. And um, from an external perspective, actually getting better? Uh, yeah, bragging rights. Bragging yeah, rights. yeah, and, and the handicap stuff, yeah. okay. right? I hear guys talk about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it, it's really important. So if your audience were, di like, tell me your audience. Uh, anyone who's trying to improve their golf game. Boo. Who's your audience? The do-it-yourself owner. Okay, white guys who want to. Thank you. How old are they? <laughs> now, now, are they golfing? Are they golfing because they want to get really, really good? Or are they golfing because they are social golfers? Thank you. That is bingo. That's gold. Okay, that word embarrass, that's super important. This isn't a guy who's like hitting the links and is, you know, I don't know, what's a good handicap, guys? Like, okay, yeah, he's not a scratch golfer. This is somebody who maybe has to golf a couple times a year for a charity event or like work buddies or boss and doesn't want to look like a complete dumbass. Okay? So if that's your guy, then you're selling uh, the opposite of embarrassment. Uh, you know, self-confidence, right, in, in golf, right? But you're not selling expert golfing lessons online. Cool. Uh, other people with, yeah? So um, when I was talking about different customers, so for instance, we're trying to do a uh, $150 million project downtown Albuquerque for entrepreneurs. Okay. So it's called Innovate Albuquerque, and we've identified five stakeholders, right? Your founders, your funders, your pillars, your, your finders, and your fans. Got it. And I so got you. You have a CX arc for each one. Five makes it a little more complex. I will say that I have had success breaking it down to as many as three. Um, actually, no, no. Our, uh, one of my clients, real estate, I don't think you were in here at that point, real estate client in New York City, they have five very different psychographics, and we had to address each one. So yes, it can work. Um, it looks a little bit different in that um, the online bit is a lot it's a lot harder and, and more complex to address those five different stakeholders up front with your CX, but on the back end, you can automate a lot that's going to um, segment them 
pretty easily. So you just have to be creative and you have to be very, very clear about the differences between those people, what they want, what the transformation is. But yeah, you can do that. That's a good question, you guys. Um, anybody else want to check their transformation? Yeah, over here, Blazer. So we do a lot of property management and software as a service. Okay. So I guess like the external transformation is that they're organized, they have a lot more time to do the things that they want to do because they don't have to deal with the paper anymore. The internal also is much more organized. Is what? Also that they're organized, but also it's much other common. Who is who's your customer? Like me, I have three houses, or I have five apartment buildings that each have 500 units. The second one. Okay, so you're selling to big developers who small to mid size. Okay, um, and you said the transformation was organization. You're selling efficiency, right? You're selling money. Right, you're you're selling um, greater efficiency, therefore lower costs, lower people costs, um, and and possibly lower physical plant costs. Right? Okay, that's your external. You got to figure out what your internal is. What is gonna be be the thing that those guys like? Right? It, have you talked to them enough to know? And and why are they switching from their the the legacy product to you? Right, they're old school. Okay, they're old school. Then you really have to figure it out because that's a complex sales environment. You're going to have to talk to a bunch of different people. You're going to probably have five, three, three uh, avatars uh, to deal with because you're going to have old guy who run, who, who it's his company and it's all his property. You're going to have his son or someone else. Sorry, I'm being general, but um, and then you're going to have the person who's actually going to have to implement this and get buy-in. All those people are going to have a different internal transformation. You got to figure it out. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so as we talk about it, and, and the gentleman here with five, he really shine, shined his light on that because um, he's got five, and we can use the word persona, we can use the word avatar. It's really important that, um, you know, and we could get into this, this frankly an hour is too short to do that, but um, you want to create a very robust uh, persona or avatar for your customer or customers. And that has to start with the emotional bits, and then you layer on all the other pieces too. You know where they where they go on the internet, and um, what car they drive, and what clothes they wear. I mean, down to the the very granular things about the person. And if you don't know your customer well enough to be able to create those avatars or personas, um, then you're not ready to to create your your arc, and you're probably not ready to to sell as much as you you should. So I would spend, I would invest some serious time into creating avatars and uh, and personas um, that then you can take through an arc for sure. That's a great question. So if I take it just one step further. Sure. So sometimes you know, like some demographics are some easy for some, but not so easy for others. Like property managers, you go S and D, but she knows she's selling to a white man, right? So she I can know. she can drill down. She, yeah. So what's your question? So I guess the question is. So then we're talking about psychographics, not demographics, right? Do you guys know the, the term psychographics? Okay, so um, demographics are the things that we can that we can basically quantify, right? They're the things like makes this amount of income, lives in this zip code, um, spends this much a year on golf lessons, um, Things that are all very numbers and data driven. The psychographics are the touchy feely part. That's why this is art, guys. This isn't science, um, and and I don't want to bill it as that, even though it can have very very significant impacts on metrics. Um, psychographics are the pieces that uh, are where you get to put the flesh on the bones of this person that you've kind of created in your head through observation and conversation with your customers. So um, Albuquerque, um, give us one of your personas that you're going to be working with or avatars. Founders. Founders. Okay. Founders, are, do they already live in Albuquerque? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know how old they are? Yes. How old are they? They're uh, 50 to 70 and they're... Awesome. They're money Great. What are they afraid of? There is a psychographic, all right? 
That's just one bit. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, so I have a friend. Her name is Rachel Cook. She is the mother of three. She just retired her husband from teaching to work for her because she runs three times a year a small business training program for women. Rachel wrote down her avatars um, a couple years ago. We did it together. And it, her avatar, the psychographics were things like had an alcoholic parent has a chicken coop, <laughs> breastfeeds her children. All right, things that you're going, what? How would she ever know that? And it, does that person even exist? All right, so it was this very specific avatar. At the same time, she was also saying, this is a woman who wants to earn enough money that her husband does not have to work any longer and can hang out with her and, and contribute to the business. This is also a woman who um, values revenue, but also values giving back to the world. So there were all these, that's a psychographic, all these things that went into this person, and she's in her 30s, and she lives in a um, suburban town, and she drives a van, and all this stuff. Rachel found that the people coming, she didn't mention any of this in her marketing at all. She never said, you have a chicken coop. <laughs> People started coming into her funnel who fit this avatar to a T. Many, many, many of them to the point where she makes like half a million dollars a year working 20 hours a week at her house. Not bad because she was very specific about her avatar. So yes, avatars are super important. Um, did, did we get yeah, through? Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else? We can go there. I can send you one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I can send you one, um, and and I, I highly recommend it. And again, if you've got a couple different pieces of, uh, you know, a couple different avatars, it's vital that you do this exercise for each one um, because it will impact your CX. Yeah, for sure. Um, this I'm going to stick on SlideShare for you guys too, um, and I'll put um, also the, the avatars uh, worksheet. Yeah. All right, so... That was an awesome digression. Thank you for sparking that. And um, so as, at this point, you're probably thinking avatar. You're thinking, how did my avatars go through the CX arc? Whoa, this, there's a lot here, right? So um, let's break it down a little bit and start. Again, you've already identified for yourself what your transformation is. And you've said, all right, I know what the internal one is. I know what the external one is. Let's start with exposition now. Whether you're doing content strategy, whether you're doing your front end, whether you're doing onboarding, you're going to start at a different point, right? That's not what, what I want to um, differentiate at the moment. But I do want to know, all right, well, in the meet and greet, the first time that they're interacting with your brand, you've got to decide what medium that is. You've got to decide what the message is. And then you've got to decide what your invitation is for the next step. So take up your pens or your keyboards or whatever, and write that down. What is the medium for this first meet and greet exposition? What's the message that you want to give them? And then what's the invitation? If you need some inspiration, you can go to the who, what, where, when, why, how. I'm also going to fast forward to this next one, next range of slides, because that'll give you some brainstorming. So through what media can you communicate this story? And then how will you invite them to engage with you further? So go ahead and write that down. And um, I'll give you a little bit more time to think about that. And when you're ready, go ahead and start sharing with your neighbor. So this is first touch point. What medium, what message, what's the invitation? You have 30 seconds. Yeah. 
Okay, stop. That wasn't quite 30 seconds, but I'm God right now, so. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. No, the reason I said that is because I didn't realize we're like straight up out of time. So um, what you guys just did was just the very first step of building out your CX arc. And I wanted to make sure that we at least got one. Um, I would love to go through the rest of it with you, but that is not in the cards for today. If you would like um, 15 minutes of like jam session discussion on your CX arc, then write your email address on what you've drawn and just leave it up here for me. Um, if you don't want to write, if you want to keep your paper, that's fine too. Just leave me your business card and I'm happy to go over it. It's super fun for me. I learn a lot in that process, so it would be great research for me. And, um, and also as a gift to the, the tech.co community, which has supported me massively. So um, thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'll be outside after and can take them. I appreciate your time. Thanks. <laughs>